Hey guys, it's Whitney. I wanted to come to you and give you guys a new video today. In this video, I'm just going to give you kind of some insight. It's obviously I'm a hairstylist, so, but it can relate to anybody that's in the beauty industry that does makeup, hair, um, skin, eyelashes, because it's going to be the same process. So I'm just going to give you guys some like tips and some insight on what you can do to kind of build your clientele and just to kind of give you the life that we don't see like we see a certain life on instagram we see all like the celebrities and the, the popularity and the likes and comments and beauty but we don't see the work that it took to get to a certain place so i hope this video helps you guys um i know when i'm done i'm gonna be like dang i missed some stay tuned um so cosmetology school was not just doing hair there was definitely tests that we had to take there was definitely homework and things we had to pass in order to get to be able to be a licensed hairstylist. So fast forward, you get all your hours, 1600 hours, um, and then you're ready to take your state board test. State board test was very, very stressful. Um, I was just really excited to get my license. So once I got my license, I was like, my life is about to start, okay? I was like, my life is about to be popping, I'm about to just do hair, like I'm about to be doing celebrities hair, I'm about to have so many clients. Um, my life is about to be popping. Uh, I have the best life. Like I really felt like being a hairstylist was gonna be like the most easiest job ever. Like I really felt that. Um, and so you see Instagram, you see these celebrities, hairstylists, you see them traveling with celebrities. Like you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna live that life. And um, when you get your license, that's not exactly what happens right away. <laughs> the hardest thing ever is being a new stylist and trying to build your clientele. Um, I had like a struggle year of building my clientele. There would be weeks when I would get like one client for the whole week and that money that I made would have to go to the owner of the shop so I could keep my booth going. Um, so there was, it was super discouraging. I mean, I wasn't making money. Like, I'm like newly licensed. I put in 1600 hours and I think it's time to raise my prices and I felt like my work was quality so I had to raise my prices and I just wasn't getting the clientele that I thought I was going to continue to get so it was like a struggle like paying the booth rent and then having to build my clientele so I went like a whole year with just being like <laughs> on a struggle like I don't know you just have a vision of what your life is going to be and it really isn't what it, it really isn't right away I can say that um, you definitely have to put in work if you feel like if you think your clients are gonna come to you it's not gonna happen I know I was in a point where I was like just waiting for people to hit me up like I wasn't posting I wasn't um, going out to find my clients I just felt like they were just gonna come to me and girl when I tell you they will not come <laughs> like they will not come like so for me things started changing once I started to actually um, post 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 instagram is like a huge like a huge tool for you that you can use um instagram is just like the best tool you can ever use like as long as you use the hashtags and post quality work that was like probably a big thing for me like most of my clients come from instagram um and also like word of mouth but i think the be the biggest thing that i can give like uh, up and coming hair sellers or makeup artists or anybody that wants to be in the beauty industry in general is you have to be consistent and continue to hustle if you give up there's a lot of people that will just give up on like hair like they'll just stop because they feel like they're not getting clients um, but there was moments when I felt like I was gonna give up but I now see that if you're consistent and you continue to post and don't give up and give it time you will flourish I know for me um, it took me a while but it's been a while like I've been doing honestly I've been doing hair for like eight years um, like I've literally been doing it for eight years but um, being licensed it'll be two years in June which is crazy um, but it takes time like you cannot just expect clients to come and just be like I give up on this career like ugh. like there was times when I felt like I was gonna give up but I'm thankful that I didn't because like now it's almost about to be two years and I'm now finally my clientele is like booming a little more you know um, so Number one, you're not going to just be popping right when you get your license. You're not going to be rich the first year. You're going to be kind of broke the first year. I'll just say it. Um, you might be broke the first year because <laughs> you're like new and you have to think about it. There's like so many other stylists. What are you doing to stand out amongst 
all the many people in every city. Like people don't mind driving from LA to come to the IE. So people don't like I have people that drive from LA an hour to get to me to do their hair when they can go to stylists in LA. You have to figure out what separates you from them. You know that you understand what I'm saying? Like you have to have a signature about, about yourself. I know for me, mine's is like my customer service. I think that's like my number one. I am rarely late. If I'm late, it'll be five minutes max. Um, another thing is I don't cancel on my clients. I understand that things happen, but thank God I haven't canceled. I'll sometimes go in sick. Um, I know for me, what I did is I studied things that I didn't like when I was in a salon, and I promised myself that I would do like the complete opposite. Um, I hated waiting in a salon for six hours when I had an appointment at 8 a.m. and they're starting at 11. I feel like that's like ridiculous. So I looked at things that were not working and I didn't like and I made sure that I would change it. I find that for me it works like that I give my client their specific time and they're in and out. Like they love that. Well, another gym that I can give you is you need to market yourself. You need to brand yourself. Um, the way you talk, like, I know I get turned off by, if I see people like, be, like even on Instagram, and people say, oh, it's simple Instagram, but for me, you have to be professional. You never know who's watching you, and for me, I don't cuss on my Instagram. Um, I don't post inappropriate stuff on my Instagram. Um, I don't talk mess about other stylists. Um, I know for me, like, there was a few people that I followed, and they were like, their attitudes were a little too messy for me and I was like okay I don't even want that energy around me so I think you have to really brand yourself like you have to realize as a stylist you are a brand um, I am my brand Whitney the way I carry myself uh, people trust me so make sure you are branding yourself appropriately um, and it's easy just just be appropriate you know don't post something you wouldn't want your mom to see or your grandma to see you know, so that. another thing is be consistent. If you are posting on Instagram, make sure you post every like two days, or if if you can't do it every day, at least post every two days. Um, if you don't, if you run out of stuff to do, then post old stuff and and delete it and pretend like it's new. You know what I mean? Because nine times out of ten, people aren't really on your page. They're just looking at the news feed, so they might forget that you posted that a month ago. So go ahead and repost it um, and just keep getting your work. Use hashtags. If you don't use hashtags, you are missing out on clientele. People don't really look at cards anymore. People search hashtags. So make sure you are hashtagging LA hair, IE hair, Rancho hair, whatever city you are in. Don't be afraid to charge your work. I think I was so afraid to charge my work. I was doing weaves for so cheap and my weaves were so much so great quality. Like I rarely have complaints. Like I don't ever have people like call me like Oh, my weave isn't working out like I never have that which is a blessing thank God I'm so grateful um, but I did in the beginning when I was learning <laughs> so but you know in time of practicing and practicing and doing it over and over again I've almost like perfected my craft that I really don't get complaints anymore so but you know I charge my worth now um, I was charging really really cheap in the beginning and there's nothing wrong with that because you're trying to build your clientele you're trying to practice you're trying to do whatever but now that I have my license I've been doing it for about six seven years or I've been doing it for about seven years and so like I've almost perfected my craft so I charge my worth now um, and I was afraid because I was like oh, nobody's gonna want to pay that but they do pay it <laughs> they are definitely willing and I'm grateful for that so definitely don't be afraid to charge your work hardest thing about um, a stylist is that our checks are not constant and we definitely our checks do depend on our clients so that's why I say like it's so important as a stylist or a beauty anybody in the beauty industry that you treat your clients super like give them a reason not to go to the next person give them a reason to to find love in styling and find love in going to a beauty salon again like give them a reason to not want to be with anybody else like for me it's a complete like when you come to my when you sit in my chair it is a, like a complete release for the week you had for the day you had you come like I have my clients they they literally tell me their life stories and um, you become their psychiatrist <laughs> it's just amazing how um, you become such an important, important vessel to them and I think that's like a major thing that you need to understand is to just become their like best friend 
and that will make them stay as well and make them come back, you know? So I just wanted to do this video to just kind of give you just another side of a hairstylist, um, the another side of a beauty uh, guru or whatever you want to call it. There's a whole other side. There's weeks when your cells are, you're, you're not getting to appointments, there's weeks when appointments are booming, like, it's it's um it's just an up and down roller coaster and I'm just I love the journey. Like sometimes I get discouraged but then I have this reminder like Winnie, like you're gonna be good. It kinda shows you how strong you are as a person. Like if you're able to endure these ups and downs, these trials, and like I just know that at the end it's just gonna be such a beautiful like like all my dreams are gonna come true. Like I mean I think with anything you do in life, if you keep consistent, you put in the work there's no way it's gonna fail. I love what I do. There's nothing that I would ever want to do other than be a hairstylist. I mean, it's such a fulfilling um, industry. You get to make your own hours. You have, you can take time off if you want to. You're your own boss. I love this industry. Um, it takes a lot of hard work, but it is well worth it in the end. So I just wanted to give you guys some gems and just kind of show you what the real life of a hairstylist is. Um, it is a beautiful journey and it is just, I love it. Let me know what you guys' experiences have been in the salon and let me know if this helps you guys. I hope you guys have a blessed and a beautiful day. And if no one told you they love you, I love you. Mwah. Have a blessed day.